Hey everyone, so today we're going to learn how to build a financial model using Monte Carlo simulation. So before we begin, we need to discuss what is a financial model and what is it used for. So there are different types of financial models. We're going to focus on a valuation model that allows us to value a specific security or stock. And there are different methods. One popular, very common method is something called the dividend discount model. It's also known as a discounted cash flow model. It's the same concept, just that instead of using dividends, you use cash flows. But just to make things simple, we're going to focus on valuing a company that pays out dividends. Feel free to use cash flows if you like. So let's take a look at what we have here. So don't be too intimidated by this model. Essentially, all we're saying here is we're taking some dividend and then we're growing it into the future. And then at each year as we grow it, we are discounting it back at some type of required rate of return. And a major assumption of this model is that these dividends are growing into infinity. So whenever you're using this model, that is a major assumption. Now R, what is R? R is the required rate of return. And a good way to think about it is it's the average return that the average investor would like to be compensated for, for taking risk in the market, in the, in the equity markets. So now that we have our model of valuing a specific security where it has an input, D naught, G and R, and an output, V naught, we can then apply the concept and idea of Monte Carlo simulation. So Monte Carlo simulation allows us to think about each of these inputs as random variables that take on a variation. Each of these random variables have a variation in terms of what specific value they can take on. And given these different values and given the variation of these different inputs, we will have a different output. So what we're going to do here is we're going to apply a specific distribution for each of these inputs. And so there are many different types of distributions that allow us to describe these specific variables, specific inputs. But we're going to focus on two types of distributions, one being the uniform distribution, the second, the normal distribution. So let's begin and actually model this out. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to set a company initial dividend to $100. So let's say last year they paid out $100. Then I'm going to create an empty list here. This is where our V naughts, our different distributions of our V naught or the value of a company is going to be stored. And I'm, and I'm going to iterate through this 10,000 different times. So this is just a loop, a for loop that is continuing for 10,000 different iterations. And so for each iteration, we're going to use a library here called random, which we've imported earlier, and we're going to use a function called uniform. So the first variable G, our growth rate, is going to have a uniform distribution between 0.05 and 0.08. And so if you're not familiar again with a uniform distribution, a universe, uniform distribution can be completely described from a range between a minimum and a maximum value. And this specific value can take on any number of values within that range. So in this case, we're going to assume that growth can take a value of anywhere between 0 0.05 and 0 0.08. And we're going to randomly choose a value between there. So we're going to do that 10,000 different times. We're also going to assume the same idea, a uniform distribution for R, required rate of return for the average investor. And we're going to assume that it can take on a value between 0 0.09 and 10%. So all we're doing is we're plugging these G's and R's into our model here. And we're assuming, and again, D naught is 100. And then we're getting an output. So we're taking D1 divided by R minus G, and we have an output. And we're doing this 10,000 different times and then appending it to our Python list data. So once we have that, we can actually plot our distribution. So let's run that. And there we go. So now you notice we have a new distribution here and we can actually describe this new distribution. We can look at it. So let's take a look at what we have here. So first of all, let's see what we have in our data Python list. So you notice these are 10,000 different outputs of V naught. We have many different variations on here, but let's describe our distribution. So we can take our mean, which is just our average. So the average value given our example here of our company is 3,970. We can look at the standard deviation, it's 1,478. The max value in this distribution is 10,500, so it's all the way over here somewhere. And the minimum value is 2,100. So 
already you can see the power of using a Monte Carlo simula simulation. It's what can, how can we perceive this? We can see we can look at this distribution and say, okay, what's the likelihood of a value being greater than ten thousand? Well, according to our distribution, it's not a very high probability. It's more likely to be closer to our mean, our median of 3,970. And that's an actually another data point that we can actually calculate. So let's just take a look at np.median for our data, 3,530. So what's, what is that telling us? It's that telling us that 50% of the values lie below 3,530 and 50% of the values lie above the value of 3,530. So that's essentially that's Monte Carlo simulation. So I, I wanna jump back to this model real quick and I'll try to understand a little bit more the fine tunings of this model. So again, one of the major assumptions of this is that you're assuming this company is paying dividends into infinity. That it may not always be the case. But more importantly, what is this term here, R minus G? And what happens when this gets closer and or further, further away from it? So what you'll find is the closer R to G is, the closer R, R minus G becomes. So for example, the closer to zero that becomes the larger V naught will increase. So in reality, for example, you could have a, a spread of, let's say R is 10% or 0.1, and G we have a, a value of 0 0.09999. And you could potentially get, even if we paid out, a, the company paid out a dividend of $1, you could get a value of a million. And that just doesn't make economic intuitive sense. So you need to be reasonable in understanding what is a true R and what, what is the growth rate. So R must be greater than G, but more importantly, R in a sense, quote unquote, needs to be greater, greater than G. So now that we have that idea of our discounted cash flow model and we understand Monte Carlo simulation and creating this distributions, in our next video, we're gonna talk about using the normal distribution in describing our variables. And then further on, we're gonna expand this model to include other different types of growth rates and apply distributions for each of those growth rates to model other types of securities. Because in this example, this is really great for valuing a mature company, maybe a Procter & Gamble, but let's say we want to model a Tesla or a SpaceX, where we believe that there's going to be exceeding gro high growth in a short, short amount of time in the beginning, but slower growth into the future, for example, because of competitive dynamics or new companies coming in eating at way at margins. But we'll get into those in some future videos. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm excited to talk about this. Till next time, guys. Thanks.